This is a tank engine who lives at a big station on the island of Sodor. He's a cheeky little engine with six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. The original Thomas is actually a wooden push-along toy from the early 1940s. This was actually made by the Reverend Audrey and was actually done out of a piece of broomstick for his son Christopher. As you can see, this engine looks rather different from the Thomas that we're actually used to. This model is actually based on an LNER Class J50, just with smaller side tanks and splashers. He would also be painted a teal green with yellow lining and would carry the letters NW on his side tanks. Originally, Audrey would claim that the NW would stand for nowhere, but later works would identify the railway that Thomas and his friends worked on as the fictional Northwestern Railway. Unfortunately, Christopher Audrey would lose this model when he was abroad in the US. Audrey's first actual model of Thomas would endorse the fact that he was an E2, although as you can see here it doesn't have the extended side tanks. In the 1979 Thomas Annual, Audrey would write, I bought Thomas in 1948 when I was writing Tank Engine Thomas again, and wanted to start modeling once more after a lapse of some 20 years. Thomas was one of Stuart Rydpith's standard models models with a heavy, cast white metal body, and was fitted with an SR chassis and motor. Stuart Rydpith is now dead, and his motors, let alone spare parts for them, have been unobtainable for years. But Thomas still keeps going. He is, as you might expect from his age, a temperamental old gentleman, and has to be driven very carefully indeed. After Hornby produced the E2 tank in the later 1970s, the Rev gladly adapted one to take the role of Thomas on Farquhar. Thomas's original Gage 1 model was actually custom built to run on Gage 1 track for the unaired pilot. The model was built with a Perspex body shell by the model maker Martin Gill, and was painted using automotive paint and lined with red automotive pinstripe tape. The numbers were actually custom cut vinyl stickers, and the buffers and brake pipes would actually be made by 10 Mile. The chassis, which was built from scratch, was never tested before being filmed in front of a camera and proved to be very unreliable. Following this, the model would not only have fixed pinstriping, but also was fitted with a new chassis that was sourced from a Gage 1 locomotive made by Marklin. The model would also also be fitted with the lamp and lamp irons. The chassis originally was AC powered, as this was how most Marklin locomotives came. However, during the refurbishment, his AC motor was replaced with a DC motor, as this would allow for easier running and maintenance. During the production of Thomas and the Magic Railroad, another Thomas model was actually built. This was because the original Marklin chassis had been very worn, and at the time the crew worried about being able to see these imperfections on the big screen. To make sure the model was in top condition for intense use during filming, a new model was made out of brass and painted in a matte finish. It was equipped with a CNC machined aluminum chassis and was powered by a DC motor. The Perspex model would also be repainted, this time in the same matte finish as the Thomas and the Magic Railroad model. It also would be fit with the new CNC chassis during the sixth season. The Perspex and brass models would be used alongside each other for several years. During the production of the tenth season, three more brass models of Thomas would be built due to the Perspex model being 22 years old at this point. That and tight filming schedules meant that there was very little time for emergency repairs. By this point, the Perspex model would be retired from normal use, this following calling all engines, but would be used in scenes that would damage the brass models. During the filming of The Great Discovery, a lightweight stunt model Thomas was made. It will be used for many scenes where Thomas's model will be flying through the air or across a ravine or submerged in water. 38 different facial expressions will be sculpted for Thomas, although only 34 would end up being used on screen. The faces would originally be sculpted with clay, and from that resin casts were made from a silicone mold. Some of Thomas's faces were duplicated in case the crew needed a face to look dirty or clean on the same day. Season 12 would mark the beginning of the show's transition into CGI, and the characters' faces were animated through CGI. CGI with the aid of motion capture animation. The physical faces will be replaced with white targets with triangles. Three of the Thomas Brass models are now on display. One is on display at Drayton Manor, quite unfortunately, but also at Hara Model Railway Museum, as well as with the Explore the Rails exhibit. During Season 5, the production team was actually having discussions about scaling up the models, this being from Gage 1 to Gage 3.5. Models of Thomas and Percy will be built for testing, however, the production team ended up deciding to stick with the Gage 1 models. However, Thomas's model would later be used alongside the models of the Sodor Construction Company. Company, which had to be larger than Gage 1 to fit in all the components required for filming. The model itself was made from brass and the wheels and chassis were custom machined. The model was fitted with the smoke unit and was actually track powered, meaning pickup contacts had to be attached to the metal wheels. Another Thomas would be built, this time in Season 9, actually being a Gage 3 model, was built to be used alongside the large scale models of the Scarlowy Railway engines. Just like the previous model, it had a smoke unit and was track powered. During the production of Thomas and the Magic Railroad, a life size version of Thomas's cab, tanks, and boiler were built for cab shots featuring him. The scenes were filmed with the green screen method, so the life-size model and the background for filming were green. In 2009, the series would completely switch to CGI. Thomas would be recreated from scratch by Nitrogen Studios. This model of Thomas would stay overall pretty consistent, save for the inclusion of little details that they decided to add for no real reason. And as for 2021, well... <laughs> 
let's let's just hope Thomas actually makes it out of this one.